What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is why 80% of Americans live east of this line. I'm not sure what line it's talking about. Could be any line. Could be any line. So we're talking in the live on the right side. I feel like yeah. it's going to be something like in California. Maybe maybe it's the fault line, potentially. Maybe, or maybe like the um, the tectonic plates. Yeah, that's what I mean. You have a little fault, the fault line. Uh, well, you know, I'll give you that because it's, it's, them words are definitely in there somewhere. You've been listening to all these reactions. <laughs> Smash that like button if you enjoy it, guys. Smash that subscribe button as well. If you've never seen this video before, get your guess in the comments yeah. below. If you've seen it, guess anyway, but don't be yeah. cheating. Well, I suppose it's cheating, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Only guess if you haven't seen it. Uh, what is the light goal for today? 2000. 2000 likes. Is this video today's video? This is today's video. So this is going out first, second? This is going out before our cooking video. Yeah, that's what I was getting to. Yeah. Guess what's coming out tonight? We've got a cooking video coming out after this. Uh, literally after this video. So be excited Please, about. can you go and get that video? Get the video. Get yourself on. It's going to be, what, an hour, two hours out till it's out? Uh, probably like it. Well, it depends how long it takes me to edit it. I haven't Let's edited get it that video about 50k views. Come on. Why not? I want 20k likes. There you go. Well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> 20k likes minimum or you're getting no more video we'll settle with a free i think you said 3k in the video didn't you so we'll settle with that i want 20 now smash the like button guys smash the subscribe button let's check out why 80 percent of americans live east of this line what we got this is a map of where you me and all the 7.8 billion other humans on the planet currently live it shows mm. two that is mental though isn't it we all live there yeah as totally men. different and separate realities experienced on our planet. The inhabited, populated world made up of cities and settlements of people where nearly all of us watching this video live in, and where nearly everyone you've ever met or heard of exists in. And then there's the rural, underpopulated frontiers that are still largely devoid and empty of any of us. This picture tells a million different stories, but the one I want to focus on for this video are straight lines. There are okay. only two locations on this map where the settled world and the empty world are nearly perfectly divided by a straight, almost human-looking design border. The first is here within the African continent, and it's obvious why it exists. To the south of the line is the African Sahel, a semi-arid belt that wraps across the continent, where rainfall is limited but still actually exists. And to the north of the line is, of course, the Sahara Desert. Nice. One of the most hot- Such a massive mm -hmm. part of land, just nobody yeah. lives there. I, it's crazy. I didn't realize it was that big. Yeah, it is huge. Hostile environments on the planet to human life, where several years in a row can pass by without a single drop of rainfall. That's and where the average temperature can soar to more than 40 degrees Celsius for months at a time. It's no wonder Imagine. that nobody yeah. lives there. But the other straight line boundary between the two different worlds of our Earth is significantly stranger because it slices down the center of the most powerful nation in human history, okay. the United States of America. If you zoom in more closely on it, you'll notice that this sharp division between populated America and unpopulated America follows a nearly vertical line south to north, immediately to the west of many major population centers like oh. San Antonio, Austin, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Wichita, Lincoln, Omaha, Sioux Falls. Wow, Park. I wouldn't, by the way, it's going to keep going there, but I'd never guessed basically in the center. I guess it's picking up the main mm. Texas ones, isn't it? 80% on the right. Yeah. I know there's a lot of desert. There's obviously Death Valley and stuff like that here. Nevada's quite yeah. desert, isn't it? But 80%. That's a lot. That's a lot just like in half of a yeah. good country pretty much. Wow. Argo and up to Winnipeg in Canada. These are the cities that quite literally mark the boundary of the North American frontier, a fact that becomes just as obvious when you switch out the population density map for a satellite view of the United States at wow. night. To the east of these frontier cities is a nearly continuous chain of lights all the way to the Atlantic Ocean what and the difference. eastern seaboard. And to the west of them is but a sea of darkness with only scattered islands of light and civilization. If you drive from the east to the west across this invisible line at any point, you will immediately notice the sharp difference in the distances between communities, gas stations, and general stores. In general, this invisible line separating the more developed east from the more rural west follows the 98th meridian of longitude. 
and it okay. sharply divides the American population in half. You know how overwhelming you think that, you? 80% of all Americans, some 260 million people, live to the east of this line. Five and that people. means that the remaining 20% or just about one in five Americans live to the west of the line. Still An a lot of enormous so stretch people, of territory. Well, how many people are living in the east? You're still talking like... Well, yeah, 260 yards in the east. I mean, you're talking probably about 60 mil. In the, we could probably do the math, but you're probably talking about 60 mil. That's like 60 times the amount of people in Jersey. I know, it's mental. There's a lot of people. It's no, basic. we don't even have a mil in Jersey. We have. Oh, I can say we've only got 100,000. Yeah, wait, what? <laughs> I can say we've only got 100,000 in Jersey. But even though it is only 20%, and you look at the contrast on that solar image in there, the satellite, it, it's mental, but it's still basically England worth a population there even more. No, that's weird. It's mental. That actually makes up the majority of America's land once you factor in Alaska. And weirdly, this empty part of the United States to the west of the line where only one in five Americans live includes the entirety of California, the wow. single most populous mil. state in the country that's home to even wow. more people than Canada. But California is the enormous exception to the overall rule. Because with nearly 40 million people, it alone accounts for around 60% of the entire American population west of the line straddling the 98th meridian. But of course, it gets even stranger because most of California's population lives within the westernmost fringes of the state near to the Pacific Ocean. But if you draw a separate mm -hmm. line from San Diego in the south across the U.S. west coast through to Portland and Seattle in the north, you would find that there's around 50 million Americans who live within the narrow coastal plain between the Pacific Ocean to the so west and the million. Cascades and Sierra Nevada there. Mountains yeah. to the east. An isolated, albeit lengthy, pocket of civilization surrounded by the darkness. Between this pocket and the 98th meridian exists a vast stretch of the American interior that covers about one third of all the land in the United States wow. and is just a little smaller than the entire European Union. It encompasses the entirety of eight US states and a significant amount of territory from nine more. And yet, throughout this vast expanse of land is only a mere 30 million people, or just about 9% of the American population. To put that figure into context, that's a number of people that is comparable to just the population of the greater New York City metropolitan area on the US East Coast. And then there's the fact that the vast majority of those 30 some odd million people live within just a handful of urban oases scattered across the darkness. Around a third of them simply live within just three of these oases, Phoenix, Denver, and Las Vegas. More than half of them live within just the top eight largest oases, including those largest three plus Salt Lake City, Tucson, Albuquerque, El Paso, and Boise. When excluding just these eight urban oases, the rest that remains throughout the area is home to less than 15 million people, oh, around mental. the same number of people who live within just LA and Orange counties in Southern California. The vast majority of this huge landscape is almost utterly devoid of any human life and civilization. Tell you what, it would be awesome if we're driving, straight lines, enjoy the view. Yeah. I suppose maybe, let us know in the comments, is, does it get boring, does it get repetitive? At least in the east, you're going through different cities, exploring, yeah. you can stop off somewhere. Is this just... Is it is it boring because yeah. it's a desert potentially? But then you got the canyons which are nice and stuff like that. Things to you? look at, isn't there? Definitely. Let us know in the comments if you prefer driving in the east or the west. You're either going desert long straight roads, I'm yeah. guessing, not much stopping or, more or city life kind of. City life, jumping from city to city, seeing what every city has to I offer, guess I guess. Like pros and cons to both, isn't there? Definitely. Because let... I think I'd enjoy the non stop start of the you know, the desert side. True. But then the city like like driving popping in now is kind of like more it feels like it'd be less for like less time in the car less time in the car you can get out your car but then i like hate stopping stuff. and starting all the time very true let us know what you guys prefer and um, i suppose it's how long your actual drive overall is yeah. if it's a long drive no matter what you prefer maybe the straight road desert empty you get yeah. there you know what i mean yeah but if it's short journey you can stop in a few places on the way then yeah, yeah let us know it's interesting it is mental for how empty mm -hmm. the west is i've never really thought about it no it's weird presents one of the emptiest landscapes anywhere on the surface of the 21st century earth 
As a result, the line that divides America's heavy population in the East from its nearly empty population in the West can and has been seen in thousands of different maps depicting all kinds of different, seemingly unrelated realities within the United States. And you've almost certainly seen one before and probably never even really thought about why it exists. Here it is clearly seen in the average distance from a McDonald's within the United States. <laughs> Here it is again seen pretty- Well, we know which side you're going to. I'm going east, then. You, you need a McDonald's within mm. close range. Yeah. <laughs> clearly in the linguistic divide in the country between Very those true, who are more likely to refer yeah. to this insect as a firefly or a lightning bug. And here it is again in a map that doesn't even have anything at all to do with humans. It's just a map showing the diversity of tree species within the wow. US, where the line is once again pretty clearly visible, with significantly less variety of tree species to the west of it. Even plants follow the unspoken law of this line. So what the hell is actually going on here? Why does this invisible, linear law of nature that decides so much about American society and civilization exist in the first place? To answer that question, we need to go back a few decades to the first man who ever noticed the line's reality, all the way back in 1878. John That's Wesley not long ago, Powell. Though, is it? Powell was a geologist and an explorer of the American West, and the second director of the United States Geological Survey. As he passed from the east to the west, he noticed that the variety of plant species gradually diminished to the point of being nearly non-existent. He determined that this was the case because it simply rained more in the east than in the west, and the line he drew to mark the boundary between the more wet east and the more arid west was the 100th meridian line of longitude here, which was more or less correct. I when mean, you look at a it modern, it does make sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Got more rain, you got more plants. That explains that yeah. one. Got more rain, got more plants, so humans potentially have more food. Yeah. Easier to live there. Explains that one as well. Makes, yeah, explain. Yeah, makes sense. It's just crazy. I think it's crazy to like. I, don't, I, just... I know, it's kind of like that line, do you know when it's raining, mm -hmm. and then there's always a point yeah. where it's not raining, it's not raining and yeah. it's like, why is it not raining there? Yeah, I don't get if it. It's raining right. here. I don't get it. It's like that yeah. line, it's like, nah, don't rain this side now. It's, it's too crazy. hot this side. I know you're talking about miles and miles, mm -hmm. but it's just mental to think, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you see it like that on a map, it's... It's yeah. like, yeah, nah, this, this is a force field, this line. Yeah, <laughs> no rain getting through here. <laughs> map of annual rainfall levels within the United States, you can also more or less spot the 100th meridian line that Pal identified. As you move westwards across North America, annual rainfall decreases dramatically. Dallas to the east of the line receives 38 inches of rain a year, while Abilene over to the west of the line only receives 26 inches, and Midland even further to the west only receives 15 inches. This is a pattern that repeats itself all the way up and down the line as well. Oklahoma City gets 33 and a half inches of rainfall, while Amarillo to the west only gets less than 20. Wichita and Kansas gets 34 inches a year, while Dodge City just a bit over to the west only receives 19. It simply rains a lot less to the west of the line than Just to the east line. of the line. <laughs> and that simply makes sustaining life and civilization much more challenging. Which is why humans and trees alike are all fewer and more scattered beyond it. A century and a half ago, John Wesley Powell correctly identified one of the geographic explanations behind this North American law of nature. The Great Rocky Mountains. They are the third longest mountain chain in the entire world after all, spanning for more than 3,000 miles across the continent As from the do. northern reaches of British Columbia up in Canada all Stunning. the way down to New Mexico in the south. And with peaks soaring up into the sky as high as 13 and 14,000 feet, these long and towering peaks effectively act like a colossal wall, blocking most of the moisture blowing in on clouds from the Pacific Ocean, and therefore preventing most rain from passing beyond them towards the arid plains of the east. This effect You're gonna is going to need an explanation for this. I, I know it probably is going to give us an explanation. Mm -hmm. But if it's coming over, it's getting blocked here. Why is that so dry? <laughs> you know and what I mean? why is it just that little patch that's too dry? <laughs> it's so red. And it's near the ocean as well. I'm sure you will explain it in a mm. second. But that does make sense. Stopping, cutting yeah. it off this side. I'm guessing there's potentially mountains this side as yeah. well, I guess. I don't know. 
Mountain Shadow, and the shadow cast by the Rockies across the North American plains is enormous. But of course, there are many other geographic factors at play here as well that determine North America's straight climate line. For one, the Rocky Mountains aren't the only mountain chain on the continent that block moisture blowing in from the Pacific. There's also the Cascades stretching across the Pacific Northwest, creating in their span a clear division between the wet, rainy, and narrow coastal plain to their west between them and the Pacific Ocean, where big cities like Vancouver, Seattle, and Portland have all been able to be established, and the dry more arid environments found over to the east, where the moisture populated. blowing in from the Pacific fails to penetrate into. Washington state itself could not be any more climatically different than between its west and east because of these mountains. Seattle, to the west of the Cascades on the narrow coastal plain exposed to the Pacific, receives 37 inches of rain a year whereas the small town of Mattawa, just over on the eastern side of the Cascades, receives only four and a half wow. inches of rain just per over year, the mountains. which is about the same as infamously dry Las Vegas. And further to the south in Nevada and California are, of course, the Klamath Mountains, the Transverse and Peninsular Ranges, and the most formidable range of all, the Sierra Nevadas, with that peaks as high it. or even higher than the mighty Rockies themselves. All of these high mountain peaks serve to block moisture blowing into the eastern interior from the Pacific Ocean, and in effect, their presence creates only a narrow strip of land across the west coast between them and the ocean where there is suitable amounts of rainfall to sustain large-scale human population centers, running roughly from northern Washington down to the San Francisco Bay. The only reason why Southern California contains major population centers today like LA and San Diego is because they are massively irrigated and supported by a complex system of canals, aqueducts, and pipelines that bring water in from elsewhere like Northern California where it actually rains okay. and from the Colorado River further to the east. And so being robbed of almost any moisture blowing in from the Pacific Ocean to the west, the continental interior of North America has very few other alternative sources for moisture or fresh water that are mostly limited to either rivers or snow melts. Over on the eastern side of the continent, the biggest mountain range are the Appalachians, which are effectively just speed bumps in comparison to the giants of the west. Really? The highest peak within them, Mount Mitchell, is less than 6,700 feet tall, or less than half the height of the tallest yeah. peaks that are seen in the Rockies, the Cascades, and the Sierra Nevadas. Hey, well, I love these videos. Yeah. Just because I did focus in school, but you don't learn this stuff or I you don't, you don't take it in. And it's kind of like, I just, you learn so much just mm. how someone will say to you about mountain effects. I was like, what? Yeah. It's just a tall rock. It's I know crazy. that's so basic, but now you're actually learning about it. Actually, the height making a difference with the moisture and stuff like mm. that. And it's so interesting. And also, you learn the geography of the US yeah. a bit more. But I'm loving this. It's good. <laughs> Smash the like button. Let us know if you're enjoying it in the comments below. And let us know if you want us to check out any more of these kind of like geography ones as well. It's because I feel like it's info galore and we'll try not to pause it too, too no. much. But I can't help it. I just love it. <laughs> as a result, they do very little to block any moisture bellowing into the continent from the Atlantic Ocean in the east. And so Atlantic winds frequently bring moisture across the east coast and the eastern Mississippi basin, enabling large scale agriculture without any need for irrigation. But unfortunately, these winter Atlantic storms simply don't make it far enough to bring their moisture to the western plains beyond the 98th and 100th meridian lines of longitude. During the summer months, moisture will also blow into the continent from the Gulf of Mexico, but these winds generally blow northward before curving eastward, which once again dumps rainfall across the eastern United States, but deprives the west of hardly any. Oh, As an west. ultimate result, when you combine know, all of these factors water. together, it adds up to there simply being less available fresh water across this empty third of America, meaning less water to drink and less water available for agriculture. Farms to the west of the 100th meridian nearly always require more complex irrigation practices since they can't rely on reliable rainfall as much as the farms over to the east. Makes and sense. as a yeah. result, the farms west of the line are larger and less productive than those to the east of it, simultaneously taking up more available space while feeding less of a population base, and consequently leading to significantly lower population densities. Even the different kinds of crops grown on each side of the line 
line are often very separated. To the east of the line, where water is more plentiful, thirsty corn is the more dominant crop chosen to be grown by farmers. Whereas to the west of the line, where water is significantly more scarce, drought-resistant wheat is the preferred crop of choice instead. Okay. But most alarmingly of all, however, is the fact that it appears the line dividing the wet and dry halves of North America is increasingly shifting further and further to the east as the global climate continues to rapidly change. A century and a half ago, back again. during John Wesley Powell's time, when he correctly identified the 100th meridian as the approximate boundary, the line has steadily shifted eastwards to around the 98th meridian today, and it appears to only be continuing further with this eastward migration, which will begin dramatically affecting the climate of all of America's frontier cities from San Antonio in the south to Fargo in the north which will all begin seeing less and less reliable rainfall as the century progresses, with all of the accompanying economic damages that'll entail. More and more farms within this area will begin being forced to adopt irrigation techniques, and many will money, fail man. or be yeah. forced to consolidate with other farms outright. Many will have to abandon growing thirsty crops like corn and switch to more arid friendly crops like wheat. And all of this is even more problematic when you consider that the American West is already going through what is likely the worst drought the region has seen in thousands of years. Wow. With a serious lack of rainfall, much of the American Southwest has been forced to rely on the fresh water provided by the Colorado River for more than a century now. But for the first time in recorded history, the Colorado River is drying up. Just this year, for the very first time in American history, the United States federal government cut the water that states are allowed to withdraw from the river, with the potential for additional cuts further into the future as well. The Colorado provides the fresh water for around 40 million people across the American West, and it is already so thoroughly irrigated and pulled from that the river no longer even reaches its natural delta in the Gulf of California. All of its water is basically used up or diverted elsewhere before it can even reach it. Wow. Throughout it's the mental, empty... isn't it? I know obviously in the UK we've had um, a drought as well where you had hosepipe bands and stuff yeah. like in Jersey at least. Didn't really know much about you guys having a drop, but I guess it makes no, sense. It does, yeah. Temperatures are up, aren't they? Yeah. Um, more and more water is needed. Yeah. Less, less water is available. Yeah. It would be interesting to know if any of you do live on the line um, where it's been shifting, if you have, like, maybe you're a farmer, something like that. Yeah. And over the yeah. like, past 20 years, if you've done farming all your yeah. life or something, like that, this is a big long shot, yeah. I think. <laughs> if you've noticed, yeah. If you've ever noticed quite it. specific. <laughs> Definitely. Or if you just lived on that, you'd have to be a farmer. Yeah. Have you noticed temperatures getting hot? Have you noticed less rainfall? Is it something mm -hmm. you think about? Or have you just been living? They don't really notice. Don't really notice. Yeah. yeah, I suppose maybe it's one of the things what gradually, yeah. like, just when, gradually you, happens. You when just... you live with someone, they get taller. Gradually just... get taller, oh, I guess. Oh, no, that's weird. And then you, but you see someone after a year, and you're like, oh my God, you've grown loads. Because you've seen them every day. Yeah. You wouldn't have noticed it. Is it yeah, kind of like that? that? Makes sense. Let us know in the comments. It'll be interesting to know how much it's actually getting affected every yeah. year. And uh, and if it, maybe you are a farmer and you're thinking, nah, I didn't fall about once, I'll tackle it when it comes. It'll be interesting, won't it? Yeah. It would Please let us know if you do know. It's a long shot, but you never know. <laughs> Part of America, water scarcity will be the defining characteristic across the 21st century. And it, of course, has the potential to continue getting even worse. But all of this was yeah. predicted a century and a half ago by none other than the main character of this video himself, John Wesley Powell. You see, when Powell drew his line across the 100th meridian that divided the wetter east from the drier west, his attempt was to convince the United States Congress to take a drastic action. He warned that with this serious lack of available fresh water, the settlement of the American West was going to have to be carried out in a vastly different manner than the settlement of the East was. Development would have to be more careful, more precise, and better planned out in advance. Rather than respecting the pre-existing political boundaries of the Western states that had been based on surface geography and politics, Powell argued that the West should instead be divided into areas that matched up with the region's various watersheds which okay. are hydrographic basins where all the rainfall collects and drains off into a common outlet, like a mm. river or a bay. By basing the political boundaries more on these natural watersheds, 
Pal was arguing that the management of the area's scarce supplies of water would be more efficient and better utilized than under the current administration, where the watersheds were all divided in between the various different states, Got by and who would enough. therefore yeah. each have competing interests and uses over the same limited sources of water. But Powell's scientifically based proposals and warnings would go ignored by the politicians of his day in Washington. And I would argue that we have paid the price for it ever since. Wow. Water is growing increasingly scarce to come by in the West, and it's only going to continue getting worse. And the competing interest of all the states across the various watersheds here is only going to exacerbate the crisis ever further. John Wesley Powell was a geologist and a scientist, and his thinking was centuries before his time. His analysis time. of the American West and its conclusions it were there. rooted in scientific thinking. And if you're anything like him or me, then you're probably just as curious about why our- Very smooth. I believe- Was that going into an ad? I believe so. Uh, if you want to go, yeah, yeah it's... If you want to go and check that ad out, the link is in the description. I think we've kept you guys long yeah. enough. We've paused enough, haven't we? Yeah, it was a really good video though. Really interesting. That was a great video. It kept you yeah. captivated as yeah. well. Um, it was just awesome. It wasn't yeah. one where it was like 10 minutes of just nonsense with a start yeah. and ending. It kept you going throughout. Yeah man ahead of his time as he well was, yeah imagine how different it would have been with them states i don't know if things would have been different but just for yeah. weird shape potentially you've changed your lives potentially someone else yeah. you'd be supporting maybe a different college or something like that potentially mental to think um yeah. smash that like button guys smash the subscribe button and watch the video have a fantastic day and we'll see you legends in the next one peace